Good evening and welcome to the NLC. We are back on your screens, going to be bringing you some more League of Legends action from one of the ERLs in the ERL system. My name is Velikar <laughs> and I'm going to be joined, as always, by Veteran. How are you doing this evening, mate? Doing fantastic. Another day of an ERL in the <laughs> ERLs. Love it. <sighs> oh. We had a brilliant day yesterday, so I don't actually know what to expect, but they still asked yeah. me to predict anyway, so... <laughs> well, they did. Well, let's have a look at the games that we are going to be uh, having today, if we could uh, pull up the schedule. Kicking it off uh, with Unique versus Ruddy, uh, two teams who uh, have had some pretty, sort of pretty decent splits. I think Unique have performed uh, to kind of where we expected Ruddy, roughly about the same. We then got Nord versus Natives. Uh, Two teams at really opposite ends of the table. Domino versus Verdant. Obviously, Domino going to be looking for that win to try and put a little bit of pressure on Verdant, currently sitting in fourth place. And then it's going to be another battle between someone at the lower end of the table versus someone who is doing very, very well for themselves as Veneer take on Riddle Esports in our match of the day. I mean, for me, it's always really interesting looking at those teams that dominate the first half of splits because, historically speaking, a lot of those teams typically just lose momentum. The kind of, like, 18-0 yeah. dominating Fnatic from Season 5 are kind of one-off things. Even if you go back and think of, say, Immortals over in NA at the same time, who are doing a similar dominant thing, they uh, they ultimately failed in playoffs and even get out of semi-finals, right? So when you see a team like Riddle doing so well, the question is, all right, obviously a lot of League can learn from how Riddle is playing, but can Riddle keep staying ahead of the game? Because they're playing a defense game now holding the title is a defensive game everyone else is playing an aggressive game and veneer brilliant final match of the day i think for them because veneer are the best at sensing blood in the water yesterday's game against ruddy a big example of that right are the are they going to figure out that one thing that could let them close the game against the top team are they going to show riddle's potential flaws well i, I mean especially when you consider that both of riddle's wins Games mm. that they won yet last week were s s 40 minutes, right? Mm. And if you're taking that long to close out versus Veneer, who we know this team that loves to go aggressive and loves to smell that blood in the water and, and really sort of tear you apart, 
could be an opportunity for a major scout. Could but let's be. bring it back back. Uh, bring bring it back a bit. Oh my word, sorry, veteran. To the predictions, let's have a little look at how we think that these matches <coughs> are going to be turning out. And we have got unanimous decisions for three of our matchups. The only disagreement there. Domino versus an Aragon and Hitbrain thinking that Domino can take down the boys in green. Yeah, I mean, that was very interesting, but I do like that you have that kind of discrepancy because for me, I'm playing a catch-up game in the predictions, <laughs> so I have to bet against either Aragon or Duckling. So I, I get to pick my poison here, right? And that adds mm. an extra element of risk there. <laughs> Final game of the day. Obviously, I say maybe Veneer could ibs and butts, but realistically, this is Riddle's game to lose, right? And it's Nord's yeah. game to lose against Natives, and it's Ruddy's game to lose against Unique. You have a very clear top and bottom half right now, no matter which way you swing it. Obviously, when it comes to Verdant Dominoes, a bit less so. The way Verdant picks up their wins is kind of the opposite of the way that Veneer picks up their losses, right? Verdant yeah. <laughs> yes, <actually>. are <laughs> losing the game right up until they win it, and Veneer are absolutely astro stomping their game <laughs> right up until the point where they lose it in dramatic oh, fashion. It's, it's something, <laughs> something just goes like dr drastically horrible wrong. But let's yeah. bring it back, uh, Veteran, to our first game of the day. Uh, Unique going up against Ruddy. Now, I, I think something that we were talking about mm. before we went live is that Ruddy feels like a very solidly third place team in the league yes. right now it, it feels yes. like they're confidently better than teams below them they've not quite shown what it yes. takes to to reach the echelons of, of northern riddle yes but they are nipping at their feet right mm. they are they are looking to make that next step and they're closer to that next step than they are to say falling down into like the verdon veneer tier right um of teams but they are solidly middle upper right now um mm. the question for me is like sure when it comes to the team fights i mean you guys have them box nay you guys have good utility players like rifty you're probably going to be able to win out on these team fights later on but when you do your opening game plans can you consistently execute them and i do think today's matchups are really good time for them to showcase that their early plans can be done to perfection because if unique had some sort of weakness in their match yesterday against verdant it's that even when Verdant were making errors, like for example, it took Taxa like seven minutes to get his first recall off. You weren't really seeing much pressure being applied yeah. by Unique in those windows where you could win any 2v2, any 3v3, any of this stuff and get priority. They weren't really doing it, right? They actually had to mm. contest the Herald behind on tempo, even though they had that advantage the whole time. So I think today, Ruddy needs to show a clean game, or they're not really going to convince us that in the second round Robin, they could take on the Riddles and the Nords of the league yeah and, and i think you you touched on a really uh, sort of in, interesting aspect mm. of unique there because i think when it does come together for them it's been really yes. exceptional i think paul zakali has been a, a, absolutely incredible every time i've seen him on it going into these 1v3 situations dying a lot of the time but always seeming to come out with with at least one or two kills and yeah when you do have that x factor in the mid lane all it takes is a couple good ganks, and you can really get yourself a decent sized lead. I mean, I love his champions, right? Like, I love the Akalis. Yeah. <laughs> I love all of these playmaking champions where it's like, all right, we're not in a good position, but if you're out of position for a millisecond, I could try to turn this fight. Um, and I do think that's being a core component of how we see their advantages come into the fold. But the reason that is, is because mm -hmm. watching this team, I mean, it's a unique experience because you can see all the potential actual advantages there in terms of macro. The options are available to them because their bot's winning, their jungle's actually ahead on tempo, your mid has kill pressure, but they don't seem to want to lock that <laughs> in and you find yourselves begging them, please, please do it this time. And you guys can have this game win that you've been begging for the whole time. They're good players. That's the thing. We can't say Unique are just a team of five bad players and they have no chance. Oh. They have chances every game. I almost, I want to see them become a good team. I'm sure many people do so as well. Yeah, and I, I think a team that sort of has similar aspirations uh, is one of the contenders in our in our next matchup. It's Natives versus Nord, and <laughs> I think Natives 
You had a rough first round robin, guys. We're not going to sugarcoat it. But I, I feel like this is still a team that I know a lot of the casters have been saying, this doesn't feel like an 0-7 team. It feels like there's yeah. something in there. I, I, I feel like it was probably going to be quite difficult to show that against Nord, but there have been glimmers of hope for them. They're in a similar category to Veneer, where up until they lose the game, they're winning. But that is also inconsistent itself. It's just that they they had this really cool thing where they were drafting like double enchanter Udyr compositions, where mm. you could see them being able to win a fight. Their ADC even would have them in positions constantly where they could actually do something to win these late team fights. You could think it's actually really difficult for their opponents to close out against them. And the games would drag on and drag on, but ultimately it just wouldn't go in their favor. I do wonder how much of that kind of team identity we had with them, where they had these very creative attempts mm. to win games, how much of that's going to survive? Because it's not going to be the same natives um no. for a bit so that's 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 my big question especially when it comes to for example flawed i think flawed was actually a big part of a lot of these interesting compositions the jungle pool kind of changed every week with them um mm. and i did like that i did enjoy watching that um and you do need some element of creativity if you want to take down lord who have proven they have threats in every single lane even in the jungle, right? So you, you can't take them lightly. Yeah, and uh, I think Nord are just like a powerhouse team. It, it feels yeah. strange to talk about Nord because when I think of their players and, and purely the names on their team, my heart kind of wants to put them above a team like Riddle uh, in, in certain ways, but it feels like they are a bit more individualistic in the way that they play and they don't quite have that coordination that Riddle do. Still, an immensely powerful team, and I think that fighting against them is an incredibly bad idea a lot of the time because yeah. they just have so much raw talent. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're a big name team, right? Like, yeah. everybody recognizes the players, and if you don't recognize, wow, there are at least five French people for every one of you who do. <laughs> so, they're a very recognizable team. They have a lot of experience, and that experience does show what Riddle are bringing, if we want to contrast those two teams, is definitely some unique things in terms of their approach to objective control situations. Um, they do love to contest pretty much every objective, but the way that Jungle Mid on that team, particularly Fire Rain, have been playing around it is very different from the way a team like Nord does. Nord are being much more standard front to back, but you've got like the Lissandra being brought out for Fire Rain, for example, and mm. they're very coordinated in their dives in that regard. I feel like Riddle are like the end point of, say, um, Verdant with, uh, with, with Nyla, right? Um, in yeah. how they utilize the Camille and the midsection to just do these immense dives on the back line, which are very flank reliant. Whereas you're seeing a more traditional front to back four man with like Akabane and Kasing mostly being the engages with Olaf somewhere off split pushing probably or Jax or whatever <laughs> WoW has yeah. decided to play this time, right? That's normally, that's normally the setup well, we he's, see. That's he's he's very had a couple approaches. Cassanto games, right? He's, he's had a, that is a, true. a couple that Cassanto true. games. Yes, um, I mean, but... when they respect their opponent, they go like, all right, well, like, let's, <laughs> let's, let's see if you still got it, right? And then yeah, they play hard to him. Enough. That's the scary thing strategy. about Lord. That's the scary thing. That's why I want a creative team against them. <laughs> and I hope Native still have that level of creativity. Right? Yeah. Um, I, and I think a, a player that you sort of touched on there was was Nyla, right? In that whole discussion about how he's integrating oh. with Verdon. And I, I, I kind of want to move on to talk about their matchup this evening yeah. uh, up against Domino. I feel like th these are two teams that if you look at sort of their, their past sort of few games, right? Past three or four games, Almost going in opposite directions. Domino have been a team on a rise, and it feels like Verdant have, have faltered a little bit. I mean, there is that, but I love that you bring up Nyla because I'm I'm so sorry if I butcher your name, but Fionbun, <laughs> if I pronounce that even vaguely correctly, the top the top laner for Domino is also a really big point of interest for me there because when it comes to mm. the big plays that explode games potentially in their favor, they come from him. And we talked a lot initially about how Snabby and Lari are able to do things around the map in weird ways. Snobby is almost their team's jungler, right? Um, the, the fact that you also have that kind of explosive pressure at any point 
from their top laner that's something nyla's gonna have to think about because if you're playing a champion that loves to split push be in sides and the enemy has a guy that can get fights started in their favor while you're not even there that could be an issue so nyla has to think about the map in a more complete way going into this particular matchup and we're gonna see two somewhat different styles of top lane going mm. on here i don't like calling this like a facilitating kind of top lane i'd love to say that it's an explosive kind of it's a breaching kind of top lane yeah, right it this makes is the guy things happened yes exactly this is the guy <laughs> that is demolishing the wall to begin the siege right that's yeah. the guy that i'm thinking of trebuchets in top lane okay yes. all of Throwing so I was thinking pounds, like objects, a SWAT team with C4 distances. and stuff, you know, oh, okay. and this right. guy's like, and then, and, then the, and then the commander's like, blow it. And Fionn Boon's like, this is exactly what I'm here for, baby. Let's go. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic stuff. Right. So now there is only one matchup left to discuss before we get going. And that is going to be our match of the day. Veneer taking on the undefeated Riddle. Battle between the two Norwegian teams in the league. Well, Domino here as well. Two of the Norwegian teams in the league. I can't wait to see how this goes because like we were talking about a little bit earlier, Veteran, the explosiveness that Veneer have in those early stages up against Riddle's more controlled methodology. Yeah. I, I think that presents such an interesting uh, conversation, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I love Riddle's approach to team fights. I'm watching them team fight is just brilliant, to be honest. And it's allowed Reptile to have a phenomenal split as well. Um, mm. But I feel like it's going to come back to this a lot. Like, I do love the top lane matchup here as well, right? <laughs> like, the way that Banderas has been playing on his Camille is so interesting to me. And Lingui has looks like he's the guy that can make things happen for his opponent. So we're almost seeing, like, a similar matchup twice in a row. I'm So... In this regard, even though bot lane is going to be a huge point of contention, the way that the game shifts is probably going to be reliant on how these top laners play again. Mm. Um, when it comes to bot lane, Chris Berg and Touch, they've been playing very strong mid-game spiking bot lanes or just straight up lane bullies. Very interested to see how that goes into Reptile Kiba, who have leaned more towards like scaling stuff. And we have seen instances where they've lost out in tempo against weaker teams, right? Yeah. Um, but that, the last time that we actually were casting, we had Kiba on to talk about one of those instances and he immediately threw Reptile under the bus. <laughs> but if they do a similar kind of set of mistakes, Chris would touch are absolutely two people who will run away with that. And Veneer is the kind of team that relies on stuff like that to mm. possibly win. Um, whether they close it is another thing entirely. That's the flip side of your 40 minutes thing, right? Sure, yeah. it takes Riddle like 40 minutes to close, but if the game gets to 40 minutes and your opponent's veneer, I feel like you're feeling kind of comfortable about your chances <laughs> of winning this one, right? That's the flip side of that. Well, veteran, maybe we can actually get a little bit of a listen in to the inner workings of veneer as a team, as I believe mm. we have got a comms video that they have asked us to play on broadcast. So I was wondering if we could bring that up and uh, sort of take a listen. And we see oh, the Shieldberg come out for Deadboxing. The TP flank again. Oh, there they come. He's got that ultimate up and available. They do actually get the double teleport. So down goes down. no name. Death charge used the We turn with my R. Yes, yes. It's fine. Just turn with me. I will probably look for the dress. Can we turn on him? Look, 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 yeah, look, sure, look, sure, look. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Look, Jace, 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 Oh, that was absolutely great. Thank you very much, Veneer, for giving us that uh, little peek behind the scenes. I, I love it when I just hear the players just screaming like different goals. You've got one person diving over all trying to kill someone. Everyone else is going dash, 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 dash. 
But this really clarifies something for me, which is that Ploxy, he's a guy that we brought up as being like the quintessential bridge jungler of the NLC. And the bridge mm. jungler is a guy whose job is to make sure that his team can essentially get to the next stage of their composition, right? And they love things like Wukong, like Vi, like Trundle, all this kind of stuff. And he was the guy laying out the plan for how we get the next thing, how we get to the next stage. And the support was the one calling everything in team fights. This for me is exactly what I love because ADC's mid, you're kind of thick. I'd prefer the junglers and the supports talk and, you know, give out oh. the shot calling like real men, right? And then the top laner, who either spends his whole time on side watching his team in, immediately brings in the bigger picture there, which is Nash. I loved what I was seeing there. Jungler calling up the plans, support coming in and calling in target selection, top laner calling in the macro plan, and everyone else followed. I do love that. So interested for that matchup later on. Um, but for now, we're back to Unique and Ruddy. Ruddy were yes. the guys getting a little bit fisted on your screen there. But, you know, they brought it back eventually. <laughs> Let's see if we can actually have a clean game from them today or yes. if it's a sign of the state of Ruddy, right? Unique could potentially actually make all those small advantages they've had in other games that they haven't capitalized on. Maybe today is the day that they actually make all that work. And, you know, maybe they actually close out against Ruddy. Um, but maybe. if Ruddy have to rely on late game team fights again, bit of an issue. That, if you want to talk about an early game composition, <laughs> opening with Caitlyn, that is how you do it, right? Caitlyn, you can go straight into Lux, you can go into something like Karma if you so desire. Morgana was an old classic if the enemy decides to go into something like Karma, or into mm. a more pick-based composition, but that's kind of unlikely. Um, but yeah, Caitlyn first pick, the gauntlet has been thrown down. Ash is out, so you can't go for Ash Heimerdinger, you're not trading for Elise. A lot of early power was banned out by Unique, actually, and Ruddy going for one of the biggest picks. Um, Orn is an interesting one. It is somewhat difficult to play Caitlyn into a champion like Orn with <laughs> his heavy levels of ranged engage, um, but curious to see what they do um, outside of that. The Karma's probably going to be the lock, and the Karma yeah. is indeed the lock. Yeah. I, I mean, there are still, like, pressure options available for the Caitlyn, right? Something like the Lux is, is potentially something that you yep. go for, but the Karma, I, I think a, a a stronger poke pairing in terms of the raw damage, even if you are sacrificing a, a little bit of that pick. And I'm going to be intrigued to see what No Name uh, chooses to go for in terms of this Joss. He's had a lot of different styles of picks that he's gone for uh, over the course of the split. We've seen, like, the Maokais, we've seen the Elises, we've seen the Udis. So, so I go. think that he can facil facilitate very interesting roles uh, within Ruddy, and I'm intrigued what they're going to put him on. Is going to be that Lux locked in like we were just talking about. So a lot of pressure already locked in for Ruddy in the bottom half of the map. Yep, yep. I love to see it. You have to kind of commit to a composition like this. Cassante also being up is a huge deal, to be honest, because yeah. now you get to play completely towards bot side. Cassante is still a champion that wants to be at least even or ahead. He does not do so well if behind, but into a tank matchup like this, that somewhat is bread and butter. I love the Lux, um, the Lux paired with the Caitlyn. Unique do technically have full counter pick bot lane available to them now with the AD pick. We have Varus down, you have Ash down, your range options are kind of gone, so it's going to be the classic Karma Ezreal. Works very well into a set of champions that you know wants to push you into your tower. Karma can insta give mm. the wave. On six, Ezreal can insta give the wave really easily. Insta giving the wave is very good for a champion like Ezreal that wants to poke with his skill shots because now you can no longer use the minions to block his skill shots. That's why this pairing is so common. What does this mean for Ruddy? It means I expect Fleet Footwork, I expect Dawn's Blade, and I expect them to be fighting level one onwards because the okay. only way to prevent these guys <laughs> throwing Q at the wave all the time is to fight them, make them burn their skill shots on you, make them burn their autos on you, and force the wave into them that way. If you do that, then you can get your Caitlyn Lux lane off. So, so I, but I think on the flip side of that, right, you can still look at this um, as your karma as a, an attempt to uh, neutralize that combo. So if Ruddy aren't necessarily able to execute with their bot lane in that manner, then a lot of that sort of play that they want around the bottom lane I think becomes harder to pull off, right? Um, yeah, I mean, the, it's it's the best option that Unique have given. I will say, though, that 
there's no reason for Ruddy not to go for a heavy skirmishing jungle on the next rotation and just all in on bot lane. They haven't mm. just gotten a matchup that, that Cassante is comfortable with. Cassante is ridiculously good in this matchup because the bread and butter of Orn is those brittle procs and Cassante's W actually blocks that as well as his immobility, um, his unstoppableness, I'm sorry, um, preventing the Orn ultimate, it also effectively prevents Brittle. So it's a very difficult matchup on top side that Ruddy have no real reason to have to worry about. So you're just gonna see a super hard skirmishing set on bot. Wukong's out. I like the Vi ban. That would be a really good jungler for Antwer, but he's been very comfortable in this Wukong so far. I'm interested to see what it is that Ruddy pull out with this. Uh, to be honest. Yeah, and, and I, I do like the Wukong in the sort of context of what's been pulled together because you've got the Orn who can provide so engaged, but that Wukong is it is shown to be really, really strong in the NLC at just getting inside of team fights and causing a menace. His backline access is incredibly strong. And when you've got oh something God. like a Caitlyn, like a Lux, if you can get to the backline, that's oh. going to be incredibly important. Um, we up? are back looking at us. Um, we are no longer Weird. looking at us. We've got the champion <laughs> select here as well. It's going to be Gragas, Ooh. actually. Is that going towards Rifty? Oh, that is... Jungle. Okay. Yeah, it's a jungle Gragas with a potential mid lane Yasuo to capitalize on the multiple knockups and knockbacks that they have. That's very interesting. I'm, I, I'm very interested in how they're going to actually build out this Gragas, but you want to talk about skirmishing bot lanes. Gragas is a huge skirmisher in the bot lane and can help them get that wave out. Um, also, just his displacement and his knockups obviously pair really, really well with the Yasuo and are pretty decent into his opponents. One thing he can interrupt really obviously is the Orn ultimate, right? So yes. Orn goes R, goes for second R, he can't do it on Cassante. He's gonna get blocked by the Yasuo, and the Gragas is going to throw him out of any chance of getting the second R off. It's very difficult for the Orn potential counter into the Caitlyn Lux. Low mobility carries, who obviously don't like that. Um, it's very difficult for them to get this off. And so much here is on Demboxne. This is a full mm. protect and play for Demboxne composition, not just in terms of the four lane setups, but in terms of how it works the five, how it wants to work in the early phases of the game. The big thing that you want to see is a strength we have brought up before about Unique. It's Cyrax, it's Pedersen. They have actually done well in lanes that should have yes. certain advantages. We want to see that 2v2 come off for them, but they also have the backup that they love to have, which is pull 227 on that Akali. Yeah. But <laughs> you have to think it's going to be very difficult for them to pull off against a Gragas Cassante double displacement duo. I, I, I think. That's that's the thing for me, right? I can see how a, a Wukong uh, gets into the backline and starts dealing stuff, but I think it becomes really, really difficult for additional sort of damage follow-up yeah. to to join him, right? And if you've only got the Wukong diving in and maybe an Orn helping him out, that's not a team fight that you win, yes. right? And I, I think that sets up a really um, difficult proposition for Unique because we've seen they've had sort of strong individual play, but if they're not able to pull it get together in the team fights. That's going to really hamper yep. their ability to, to rise up the table. Yep. I mean, it's it's a very difficult game for them. The thing that they are going to have to rely on is a lot of individual advantages. And they have gotten those before. But can Antwerp capitalize on those individual advantages, get them on these objective first, put Ruddy in a position where they're not just countering an opponent going into them, but they have to go in towards their opponent. Because those are the moments where maybe Akali can get on their back line, maybe Wukong can do something, maybe you can get the ball running and you get the game in your control. But so much of this is going to come down to this early 2v2 in bot lane, probably an early 3v3 in bot lane. Very interested to see how that happens. This should be an explosive game, which is not normally something we see from Ruddy, right? Ruddy are a very mm. slow early team that ramp up, ramp up, ramp up, which made their game against Veneer so exciting, right? Mm. Um, you saw on your screen, right? Veneer were 11 and 2 at one point. <laughs> um, and we were saying before, we need to see a clean game from Ruddy. This is the game. Right? This is yeah. the game where they could easily have a very clean early game. They could have full control of the map for ages, and then they're just thinking about closing. They 
understand the issues with Ezreal Karma <laughs> and Unique understand that they understand the issues Let's... of Ezreal Karma. Let's get oh. ready to rumble, boys! Oh. oh! Come on! Come on! Fight! Fight! No! no don't! Don't walk away from each other! Oh. Why is the poke team just poking them? My oh. god, man. Wanted a level one with some more chest head than that, guys. You've disappointed that was, middle. That pop. was... I am... I am fundamentally not happy. <laughs> but realistically, right, that's how it was going to go. Unique were yeah. going to poke them at range there. Ruddy were going to just back up towards their Caitlyn Lux, make sure they can play of their range. But mm -hmm. look, right? Whereas you have lethal tempo and you have longsword, you've got barrier heal bot lane. This is a bot lane that can take a lot of damage. They're not scared that pool 227 could come down and mess with them. They're not scared that he could jump on them in team fights. They haven't thought we need that exhaust or anything like this. Very reliant on his teammates to be that crowd control, to effectively be that exhaust. He's going to take the barrier. Islux is going to take the hill and take that hill around the map with them. They're very confident that they can get their early game plan off. Well, and I, and I guess the sort of natural uh, extension of that uh, of, of that point, Graf veteran, is, is is that hubris? Is that something that you, you feel that Ruddy should have invested more resources into no. countering? No, I think if you need to go exhaust in that lane, then you are essentially like it's it's a waste to pick this, this top side. Yeah. Point. So I actually do agree um, with their approach here. Uh, but they to, to make it count, they have to be winning this 2v2. I love the positioning of Karma Ezreal on the bot lane there. Uh, this top lane matchup, do agree with the grasp on the orb. All he can really look to do here is poke with W, unless Rifty just burns W ult in his face or something. There's nothing really that he can do here. It's not a typical Orn v melee matchup where he's just going to win all the time. Rifty is just going to look to proc his Qs off, isn't he? And that's about it. Um... Yep, so it has Ooh. turned into fist fighting to the death in bot lane, but Peterson Cyrex, they're still, they're not letting him crash a wave in, right? They have those options. So every time they throw a Q out like that, maybe you can try to trade back, but what you really Ooh. want is Peterson burning his Qs on you away from the wave. That's why Nash isn't worried about being away from his minions here, because if Peterson throws the Qs on Nash, that's a wave that then Voxney can actually push in. But if you deny them that, if you keep just playing to clear these waves over and over Ooh. again, it's like a Gragas matchup into Jax, constantly neutralizing the potential for them to just dive you. If they Ooh. played any other <gasps> way, no one could be looking to dive instead of. Oh, he hadn't been one. spotted? Gets a decent chunk of damage down onto Rantware. With that pressure in the bot lane that the yeah. Voxnay and Nash do have, though, that's why No Name feels free to move into the jungle. He's actually going to get a steal on the blue buff. That's a. Uh, Pretty decent for the Gragas. He's going to be able to uh, clear a couple more camps as well. And this is putting Antware in great position early game on the Wukong. Yep. It's interesting that he's moving back into recontest because mm. Ezreal, Ezreal Karma, maybe they think they have time, but all Caitlyn has to do is just push this wave in and they will lose a lot. If this goes neutral, maybe Antwerp gets this, but Ruddy care about oh, that geez. bot lane discrepancy. They're just not Ooh. stopping. Oh, that's the binding landing onto Antwerp. Is going to be able to get out of there with his life, but well, I mean, we were saying that Ruddy needed to there play towards bottom lane. I think for the first three and a half minutes, they have done nothing but that. Yep, uh, but they couldn't get a dive off. But unique, they decided it was more worth to fix the Wukong's bot side jungle than it was to pick up their wave on the tower. And given mm -hmm. that, look at the CS lead. Right? That worked out as well for Ruddy as they could hope for. Um, this is a scenario where Wukong should maybe have been looking to do a big trade on top side. He had the information on the amount of camps that Gragas had done at that point. Um, but instead, you know, Ruddy, they've gotten everything they wanted in the first rotation. Obviously, the stretch goal would be diving unique and getting that 2v2 kill. But ultimately, they're happy. It's a pretty substantial oh. trade, actually. Oh, this is annoying. Sarx is forced to flash away. Barrier burnt by Denvox there, and Pedersen is in the wrong side of things. We'll be able to get out with a boost from the shield. But Ruddy's bot lane really sort of going to town uh, in these early stages, and, and and someone else that was doing a pretty decent job there was No Name, actually. The jungler for Ruddy, who's 
Had a couple of difficulties, I want to say, in a few of his early plays, but it's nice to see here on the Gragas, a less orthodox pick, but he's making it work thus far. Yep. Caitlyn, 44 CS at this point. Oh, been easily word. able to recall. Cyrex Peterson wants to contest this. I think they'll be very happy to take that 2v2. And no name on the recall now. So no name is now ahead of Antware on itemization. Caitlyn Lux mm. are ahead of Ezreal Karma on itemization. Ooh. Karma does seem to have the mana though, so they won't be able to just lock Ezreal Karma in lane there. They should be able to clear this out, crash this into tower on time. And if so, they will be able to come back at least with some form of itemization. Um, but Ezreal came in with the PTA start, came in with the longsword start. That's as aggressive as you can do as a mm. start on the Ezreal. It guarantees your ability to be able to fight in the initial 2v2s, but it went then Voxnay and Nash's way. And it went that way just down to a very strong 2v2 play. Yeah. And and I think this is kind of what Ruddy does a lot of the time. Um, they had a their absolute banger video on their Twitter the other day um, about one of their recent wins, just manifesting a gold lead almost out of nowhere, right? Not getting very many kills, but the gold lead building sort of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. That's how they play. It's all about influencing where their opponent can stand and gaining resources based off of that influence. Yeah, I mean, that's just good League of Legends. No name, though. He no doesn't name. have his ultimate. Yeah, he's got Nash, though, who's uh, here to help him out. The clone will get Antwerp out of that situation as Pedersen. A little bit worse for Webb, but absolutely fine. And I'm getting Deja Vu veteran at Nona, who is once again camping in this bot side jungle. Yep, I mean, he did his top side camps. His bot side camps were the only ones open. Now he has nowhere else to be, really, but bot lane. The big thing is you can just leave this Cassante up, and he's just going to naturally win the matchup. Look, he already has a 10 CS lead. Antwerp isn't doing anything about it, right? Because, you know, if you leave this bot lane alone, <laughs> I mean, that tower is just dead. Your bot lane yeah. is just dead. So he's forced to match here. No name. Not a care in the world about top lane. I'm not even sure if he knows if he's <laughs> actually, like, entered Discord for this game. You know, this is just, this is, this is the, this is the whole game right here. The whole early game is around this. They are two plates down and they are, 1.5k gold ahead already, seven minutes into the game. It's gone up by 500 gold in the minute since we were talking about them getting these incremental <laughs> gold leads. And look, the pressure just keeps going, just keeps going. Oh, oh no, that could be so a kill. Oh no! Blooded by the ace in the hole from Denvoxnay. A little bit of an overstep, and Ruddy not shy about punishing. And we're. Flushing a little bit as he's looking towards bottom lane, but there is nothing that he can do here. Ruddy. Holy moly, that CS lead on Devox. Absolutely massive now as well. Wonder if we could take a look at the gold. Blimey, that is 1,200 gold ahead. Anyone who's been coached by me in solo queue knows that my general rule of thumb is that pre eight minutes, it's not really worth greeding for plates over getting your recall. We have just reached eight minutes, and Nash and Boxley have four plates. I just want to clarify, this is not a regular occurrence, guys. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say it's greeting, but it is so insane, the lead that they have gotten here. And on that kill that they got on the Ezreal, Karma actually did ultimate E and was moving to block the ultimate from <sighs> Caitlyn, but no name on the Gragas. Eads the karma to lock her in place so she couldn't block the ultimate from Caitlyn there. So, very well played by all three members of Ruddy on the bot lane. Mm. I hate to ever say a game is lost in draft, but you know, you can see the absolute power of the draft here. Rifty just absolutely demolishing Orn in one of Orn's hardest matchups on one of the best champions in the game. Bot lane Veteran. going as expected. <laughs> The, 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 gold, the gold lead is two and a half thousand. They've got more gold out of somewhere. I mean, it's, it's another excellent early game uh, coming out here from Ruddy. And looking for more here. No name with a big bowl of damage down onto Antware. Who comes through with oh. the ultimate knights are there with the last breath. But no one's died just yet. Paul looking for no name and will find him on the Akali. Nash has roamed up and will supply some damage so Nita can take down the opposite mid laner. One for one in the topside river.
All right, no flash on the uh, Karma now. That could turn into something later on. It definitely makes it harder for her to avoid dives on the tower. This whole time, though, then Boxner, he's taking out the last oh plate. <laughs> that is a 9 minute and 52 seconds bot tower, and Cyrex can only Cyrex? run for his life. That is definitely a flash burn if Denboxnay kept going. No ultimate to execute, but after this wave, I assume it's just a straight recall. And the interesting thing will be to see where Ruddy places her next, right? Ruddy have full map mm. tempo. What Unique would prefer is for Caitlyn to go towards the mid lane. But I think this is a situation where you can try to play really hard for the top side tower as well now. Yep. Look at Orn's situation. He pretty much, if he does not recall and teleport there, that guy is getting dived by the 2v2 of Ruddy. So, yep, immediate recall there. Rifty is just leaving the wave in a good position. Rifty can now move towards the midsection and then catch the bottom wave. But he should move towards the midsection first, right? Even though he's your weak side guy, you do want him here in the event of any contest. There's no reason for him to go all the way up bot lane right now. There's more, much more reason for him to be top side. Look at his lead, by the way. He has, he has a 20 CS advantage over the Orn. Just a natural advantage you get from this Cassante priority. The Orn, the Orn was a nice pick into a potential Kate Lux, but I mean, oh they've controlled word, it very well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, have fun. The rest of the game is going to be like this, by the way. The counter nice play for Unique is to send Ezreal Karma towards mid and force the Caitlyn Lux to have to match them on mid. That's the only real counterplay that they have. If, mm. you, have, if, you've, if you are able to get priority in mid section, you can lean up towards this top tower and try to prevent them taking it. But they sent Karma top and they're doing it again. So you just have Ezreal in mid. Yasuo is able to get priority because they have no idea what's happening in river. Um, so Ruddy still have all the tempo on top side to play with. And, and it means that Nias is kind of locked under this tower, but Antware is going to open Ooh. up with the Cyclone to look for a play. Cool, the Forge God goes wide, but then Voxnay is still in a pretty bad position, able to flash away, and No Name can disengage as well with the explosive cast. No one already going down, but Unique making a play, trying to send it to the 5-2 and two team. A reminder of how fast this game is going. You might think that off of that, there was real potential for Unique to just stomp that fight, but... It's going to be another two minutes until Akali actually has Unleashed Teleport. For mm. now, those factors aren't in the game. That happens in two minutes' time. Akali can TP and flank on them on that ward that you see all the way up in the top side. That could have very well been a comeback play. I think you have to make these plays anyway when your cooldowns are up. Uh, because right now, the only way for you need to get back into the game is to fight them under all of these towers. Otherwise, the only real map play you have is forcing Kate Lux into mid, but you didn't do anything with Karma in midsection there. You didn't try to contest priority against Yasuo there. You didn't try to get numbers advantage top. So now Kate Lux, they've decided to go mid, seeing that the Ezreal Karma are there, and you really haven't gotten anything out of it thus far. And uh, does pose a, a difficult spot for Unique, and w when they're looking for those plays, right, as a result of this early game, they are down on itemization. Like, they're not going to be able to contest with what Ruddy have got for themselves. Harold going to be summoned in the mid lane, take down that tower. Ruddy attempting a sweep on these outer towers. That top lane one, the only one remaining for Unique, as that goal lead has ballooned to over 5,500, 13 and a half minutes in. But Unique are the real winners here. Because Ruddy have taken 13 plates and not one more. So there's a massive element of bad luck going into the <laughs> mid game here. See, you have to see these things, middle cop, right? Like, if you that don't is, see these. That, that is a level of superstition yeah. that I would not be comfortable basing my League of Legends analysis off. Well, I mean. I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're just going to throw that away, then Ruddy have just basically won the game. So I don't know what <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. I think I think there are very good spiritual chances for Unique at this stage of the game. <laughs> the guy that we really want to focus on though is gonna be Pool Two Two Seven, right? Yeah. If Unique are able to get a play where Pool Two Two Seven can say, you know what, then Box say that HP looks really nice and that Goldie looks really nice, but it's the same HP that you had in the early levels. I'm just gonna one shot yeah. you. That's their play. So look at the itemization, right? Going in towards rocket belt areas. 
if he gets onto that and he can find the way onto the Kate Lux, that's that's the play, right? That's the plan. That's what you got to do. But you have to get it through a Cassante, through a Gragas, through a Yasuo. That's that that's everything you need to go through to get towards mm. the Kate Lux. But if uh, they're able to escort him there, he can do some damage. And, and I think that's been the rough thing for Unique over the course of this split. As hold on, we're looking for a play onto them box name. We have caught yep. him out with the Cyclone. Antwer just deletes the AD carry for Ruddy. Taking a couple of tarot shots to heal. We'll keep him alive as Rifty is teleported in. We'll go all out on the monkey. Another one for one. Both teams hunting for blood. But that is very good. They know now that Ruddy aren't going to be coordinated enough to just defend their Caitlyn every single time. That's brilliant. More stuff like that. Imagine those kills go towards their carries, right? Mm. That is a huge game changer. It's good that they don't even need the Akali to get that damage down. Right, so, so I think they can take that. They can be very, very confident that they could get another fight like that. Because, you know, this Gragas on his own is not enough. So if Ruddy keeps splitting like this, maybe you got some chances. Akali finishing that rocket belt now. That's a huge damage spike for her on these two items. She's a threat to any squishy. And I think another sort of angle that Unique can be looking towards is Ruddy haven't really taken many neutral objectives. They've done a number on on the structures that Unique was stand had, but it's 16 minutes in, there's only one Drake been taken, the next one's spawning in three minutes, and Unique might be looking for a pick onto the Ruddy jungler, no name. Gets out of there with the help of Nash, but that means that you don't have the looming threat of a soul hanging over you, right? And yes, the Baron is something that Ruddy are going to be pressuring even more in a few minutes time but you don't have that ticking time bomb that you have to be worried about at least not yet yeah that's very true but in three minutes and t 10 seconds time we are going to be into the late game and we define that by the baron spawn and that's definitely something that ruddy are going to be able to pick up expeditiously unless another pick is made onto the Caitlyn, right? So we can expect a lot of these key ultimates to be saved for that midsection play around 19 minutes. That's the time where Unique are going to look to do something. Until then, let's try to get more damage and more key items out on towards our champions. Oh, Neos has been caught out in the river and pulled back by Rifty. He's able to flash away, keeping himself alive for the time being, but Unique top laner not having a fun time in his first team fight of the game. Yeah, Neus is straight up having a rough one. I, I I don't envy his position this game, and I certainly don't blame him for it at all. Um, going blind pick in the draft is... Ooh. Okay! Edison, Survivable. that's a lot of damage. Ooh, oh! And that's where it's showing, going on to no name, but the knockup comes through, not enough! to keep the Gragas alive, but Niter will still be attempting to diss out the damage. And we're going down to Nash as Paul kiting away with the five point strikes on the back low, but gets interrupted on the dash back by the Tornado. This is a 1v3. You will not be winning as Nash secures a double kill. It is really unfair, you know, that Ruddy just have Nash every game. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's it is. It's an advantage I thought only Verdant had, you know? But yeah, at the start of this fight here, I mean, I was I was saying, wow, at the damage that Peterson took there. But Gragas getting that immediate pick and the damage coming out from Niter, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of over here. I'm glad that Unique were trying to find something, trying to get that pick on No Name before all of this happened. But ultimately, you can see their margin for error is very, very low right now. Incredibly so, as... Ruddy attempting a repeat of uh, their day one matchup against uh, Unique. I think they were 21 to 1 in terms of kills. So they bled a little bit more than they did then, but this has been a rapid game, especially by Ruddy's standards. I definitely think um, this game is a bit like they are much more in control of this particular mm. game than they were of their first matchup. Um, even though it's not translated so much into kills, that's because their threat has been such that Unique have just had to roll over and say, "Okay, mate, you can have that tower. You can have that plate. You're not gonna, <laughs> you're not gonna have any trouble from me." Um, Nihilus also just not really many options to just do anything to Rifty on the Cassante on top side, right? Rifty, by the way, that CS lead 
is dramatically reduced because he immediately transferred that in mid late game into groupings of his team right the Caitlyn, mm. and the lux that's what really matters so so long as he can facilitate that and facilitate oh. niter and this yasuo oh no name has found paul but paul may have also found no name that cast knocking away and we're delaying the arrival of support and it's miscommunication and where flashes over the wall as paul dashes away and then vox day will happily claim that kill that is a rough one. You'd think with no names uh, usage of the cask there that there was actually a play available once Wukong's back in, but yeah, I guess they're just on different pages of the same book, and it's a book that Ruddy has been writing since draft phase. The game is firmly in their hands. And yeah, there's only so many times I can say variations of that, so I'd rather you guys mm. start fighting over Balan. Like, <laughs> expeditiously you know so, that would so, be fantastic so i guess we'll, I, I guess we'll 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 leave the topic of how big the ruddy lead is on the back burner for the time being it's big what do you want to see them do with it how do they use this league to go and end the game what time should we be seeing unix nexus fall i mean we should be seeing them try to at least bait balan very soon i'm not sure if this drake is even so worth it to be honest for them because you have rifty shoving out bot here you want to see him transfer that in towards mid and you want to see kate lux move towards the barren river side and just try to either make picks this being an example of said pick facilitate that pick into baron control and using that baron control to take the baron and on that baron if unique attempts to intercept it in any way shape or form try to contest it in any way shape or form because of the position that ruddy are in they shouldn't be able to do so so you're talking about the next two rotations they should be looking to do that right they've consolidated that pick into control of the baron now they're going to need to shove in the next wave and on that wave hopefully what you'll see is them moving towards the baron pit either starting the baron or forcing unique to make a decision with regards to what they do see how them box is hitting the wave first right Mm. This aggression means that they're intending to do this immediately into something like a Baron, or at least an aggressive play of some kind, right? It looks to me like they're not worried because they've chunked Peterson, that Peterson's going to contest wave battle, so they can just immediately take out this tower. And whereas you can incrementally win like this, ultimately the Baron is going to let you turn one of these picks into potentially the end of the game. Maybe they're going to get that onto Paul. No name Ooh. there with the knockout. That's a load of damage down on wow. Carly into the shroud, dodging away, but on about 5% HP. Paul oh, no. can no longer contribute to the fight. Antwer running away on the side. Then Voxnay on it's a three. killing spree, and they've grabbed a pick. It was onto the jungler. Ruddy head straight for Nasha. That right there. Baron control immediately into pick, immediately into Baron, right? They vanish towards that topside jungle that they took full control of off of the pick in mid lane. And Unique, they were like, okay, we need to contest this or they're going to get Baron. They got picked off for that, right? Is Paul trying to spy members of Ruddy? But look at the ward coverage in that jungle. There is none from Unique. Unique are here, though. They know that they can't just give this up. But I mean, Ruddy are like, great, what are you going to do about it? You know, they mm. get that pick on the jungler and it's a completely free bound. It's not like it's not like the enemy has the Lux. They have the Lux. A steal is not happening today. And with that, Baron, we will be expecting Ruddy to apply a significant amount of pressure. It really feels like a catch-22 playing against Ruddy a lot of the time. They put you in situations where the best answer that you can give is still the wrong answer. Yep, yeah, Akali has to recall here. The wave clear from Karma is basically worthless now because it's entirely magic damage and the Baron buff minions are resistant to that exact form. Right here is where you'd love to have a Civ here, but Unique don't have that. They have their Ezreal. Ezreal's not so good in these situations where he's being perma pushed in. That is his best form of wave clear at this point, and that does a lot of magic damage as well. Oh my word! <laughs> Oh, that's a big car set up by Nash. Then Vox Day with another one. It is beautiful stuff from Ruddy. A pick with two dead on the side of Unique. Inhibitor down in the bottom lane. Inhibitor down in the mid lane. And Ruddy 
They are looking for the push. They're looking for headshots onto Pedersen. Another one for Denbox Day. Another one for Denbox Day. A double kill for Ruddy's AD carry. Paul will shut him down at the death. But it is not going to be enough for Unique. The rest of Ruddy will stand strong. They will stand tall. They will knock up Paul. They will kill him dead. Take down the Nexus Tower. Take down the Nexus. And take down Unique. That was, that was the kind of efficient game that we wanted to see from Ruddy. It was a statement game, right? Yes. Sure, it didn't have as many kills as their last game against Unique, but they were in control of this game in a way that we didn't see before. They were doing to Unique almost what Veneer were doing to them, except they were actually able to close out very efficiently. We gave them a basic four-step process to get that Baron and to end the game, and they pretty much followed it perfectly. Yeah. One could argue whether they really had to go for that mid tower over just setting up for Baron again or not. <laughs> but you know what? That's all we're talking. An extra 45 seconds added on towards the game over from that overall. Very efficient game from them. And with Unique, this is a difficult game to find something to learn from because so much of it feels to me like you had no real options from draft. On that Caitlyn first pick, you go in towards the Ezreal Karma, you go into the Orn, and you basically have two sides that are losing already, right? Um, if they're not willing to go some kind of heavy winning mid lane pick, it's difficult to see how they stem the tide of the absolute tidal wave of pressure mm. that Caitlyn and Lux are showing on the bot lane. A winning mid section could do that, right? You can't play for plates if you think the enemy mid is about to go bot side and gank you. But you don't have that here. They default back onto the Akali. They default back onto comeback plays. And what we really want to see from Unique, like we were talking about before, is you don't have to play for comeback, guys. You do have good no. players. And you've had situations, not really in this game, but you've had situations where you could get some pretty solid leads. We want to see you play for that. Otherwise, this is the kind of thing that's going to happen, right? L look at that. Yeah. that. That E from No Name prevents Peterson from actually defending Cyrax there. Nash on this Lux doing a lot of damage. Yes. And then here, No Name again, able to get that knock up for Niter. Niter kind of an unsung hero this game. He played very solidly on the Yasuo. He was there for mm. all the picks. I feel, I feel like Niter was just having some fun. That interrupt on pool 227, though. We've seen two nice interrupts in these. I wonder if that's the running theme of this fight. Paul trying to get away here, but <sighs> not happening. Not happening. Look at the damage I, 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 coming out from this combo. And it really felt like Ruddy just like understood the tendencies of of Unique, right? And go, hold on, if we just play a load of champions that knock you up, you can't play, right? And and I guess I kind of want to get from you, veteran, an MVP because it was a big team performance from Ruddy today. But I think I'm looking at Denvox now. I'm looking at Nash. I'm looking at No Name, all having some pretty decent performances. I'd say Nash. I think they were very much relying on their siege potential working out on Nash to open up a lot of these picks. Um, if it wasn't him, it could potentially be that No Name. No Name was a very important part of this, but it's not like he had an absolute perfect game, whereas Nash didn't really put a foot wrong this mm. game, right? He had a very, very good performance all the way through. He got the game winning picks for them. He got the opening aggressive picks for them. He helped No Name in, in the jungle against Antwer, right? I think he had a very impactful performance all the way through. Um, and feels bad for top lane this game. Like, that yeah. that, that lane just <laughs> did not matter. Just straight just, up, no one cares. Just, 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 just no didn't one happen. cares. Just, just Especially for Nihilus, no one cares, mate. You are you're you can't do anything in this lane from draft, basically. <laughs> you're not getting any help. Probably not getting any sympathy. That's <laughs> just it just happens, you know. Um, but for me, yeah, Nash MVP of the game. Mm. Cyrex Peterson, man, like they've had very good games when they've had winning matchups. And I'd like to yes. see a version of the unique that just goes for these kinds of winning matchups, you know, because like this game doesn't do that bot lane justice. We've seen yeah. better from No, them. no, no. I Yeah. Unique Unique and Veneer feel very similar to me in that way. I, I look at yeah. both of these teams and I think that there are there are very, very strong. There are incredibly competitive pieces w mm. within these within these rosters, right? But we're, we're looking at some execution errors, maybe lack of proactivity in in the case of Unique, and more a sort of 
L lack of decision making, a, a deficit perhaps in that capacity for Veneer once yeah. we get to sort of mid late game. And I, I, I think that now, around about the middle of the split, you want to see those issues being ironed out because these are two teams um, in, in Veneer and Unique that aren't in that playoff race just yet. Domino joining them in, in that in that position as well. Mm. And they want to make that shot. They want to make that run to the playoffs before the end of the split. Yeah, I agree. I think I think at this point, you have to focus on either a really big strength and build a team around that, in which case we'd be looking at bot lane, or a really mm -hmm. big weakness and figure out how to make that your biggest strength, right? Take your worst thing, make it the best. And if it was, I was to go with that one, it would be you have a good mid, you have a good jungler, but make your mid jungle, like get some mm -hmm. synergy there get a mid that can enable a jungler or a jungler that plays to enable mid and play with this mid section that would be the big thing unique need to get the early game advantages that honestly they deserve yeah um well veteran um you're probably going to enjoy chatting with our interviewee from unique here starting us off it is going to be and we unfortunately uh taking the loss today and i kind of want at the start of this interview to not really focus on today's game so much but I kind of want you guys to look back at the last round, Robin. Obviously, we're kind of the midpoint of the split now. How are you feeling about sort of your first round, Robin? And have you got anything that you feel like you can take from that going forward towards the rest of the split? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the first three games we had were, of course, uh, very hard. And uh, we picked it up towards the later end of the first round, Robin. It's a bit unfortunate we got the losses that we did uh, last week. Uh, but uh, at least I feel like we weren't just laying down and dying, you know? We actually mm. made stuff happen. Oh. And uh, it wasn't fully stomps. At least. No, I, I absolutely agree with that. I, I think you, I, as a team, I think you have showed a, a lot of fight and a lot of your play. And we have seen very, very strong carry performances from, from multiple like of, of your players, right? So we know that that talent is there. It is just about getting it to work on the, on the rift on the day. Yeah, I mean, uh, today we, we tried something different with just locking an early tank top to just get some mm. main engage because I feel that was what we were kind of lacking uh, at least yesterday with a main engage. It's a bit hard having only Wukong, especially when they're playing a really good uh, poke comp with some good disengage. And uh, I yeah. think it would have worked, but uh, we kind of let them just take control over the whole game from like, I mean, honestly level 5. Uh, they just have the push bot yeah. constantly, and uh, we we try to get out of the grass, but it was pretty hard. Yeah, that that was uh, that was pretty rough. Veteran, any any thoughts? I mean, I'm curious. And so, um, you wanted to shift more towards like a tank top, so that you had another form of engage or disengage. It was that you said, um, yeah. other than you on your typical bridge champions like Wukong. By you, you tend more towards this kind of a champion. Does that mean that you're viewing your best version as one that plays very heavily around the bot side of the map um, and maybe mid lane a bit? Or how would you describe like what your what Unique's trying to play towards now? Yeah, I mean we have been experimenting a bit, but uh, I felt like uh, we've tried to at least uh, strengthen our style of playing a bit more bot side and mid centric. Then top side, okay. and uh, we we tried a bit uh, this game, but of course it uh, didn't go as fully planned. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah. Well, that happens, mate. Um, and and obviously, as long as we are, as long as you're growing throughout the split, I think that's the most important thing, right? I think you guys are definitely still in a conversation as one of those teams that can sneak into that last playoff spot. But Antware, thank you very much uh, for coming and speaking to us. I know these these interviews not fun always but i really appreciate you taking the time hope your cats are doing all right mate hope they're yep. well fed and you're looking after them properly excellent mate um thank you very much for joining us we'll see you later okay see ya all right and now Oof. we are going to be joined by nita from ruddy who were able to get the win today how are you feeling my man um yeah, the, this game felt pretty chill. Uh, not much to say. <laughs> I think it was expected to win. So, yeah, yeah, I, I think that was something that um, myself and veteran they noticed on the cast. We were we had the camera on bottom lane a lot, not too much looking at top or, or, or mid lane. Um, how is it to to play in those sorts of games, right, where you are 
not so much the focus and, and your role is much more about enabling some combos for the team at least in the early stages um i mean right now there's like infinite champions that force you to like explode the game in bot or like at least defend uh if you're on the weak side and so you just play for those like that's all that matters in those games yeah <laughs> especially like K caitlin ash any range support like it's it's so boring but it is what it is <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not may, maybe not the best time to be a, a, a professional mid laner then. I mean, hopefully they will fix it soon. So, but uh, I mean, honestly, it's fine. It's just like usually the game ends on first clear in bot lane. If it doesn't, then you get to have fun. But I mean, if I win, it doesn't matter as long as my team is playing well. I mean, they're nerfing mages again, mate. Maybe you should just look at playing NPCs <laughs> in mid lane at this point. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I actually, uh, I actually want to thank you, by the way, because last time we had you here to interview, it was off a loss, and I asked you when am I going to see the Niter Yasuo again, and you said that there are some plans, right? So I want to thank you for actually <laughs> breaking out the Yasuo, and you know, yeah, it goes, it goes out to you, mate. It. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm very thankful for that. Um, but yeah, like. In a game like this, when the game is so heavily around like bot lane like that, I, 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 w what even is your role if you're on a champion like Yasuo? Because it's not like you're going to play, it's not like you're going to Lear or Rise or something where you're expected to be bot lane on a lot of these dives. Like, are you just sat there waiting for the first skirmishes around objectives or what are the comms like there? What's your mindset there? I mean, when when you're playing a matchup like this it's just you fight to be in a better spot for when something happens like in in river or on the invade like if you can move great but you're not expected to move and um like yasu and akali specifically like play around six so before six it you just try to play as well as you can in lane don't really do much else yeah and you play very well so congrats on the win Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, very relaxing day, I, I imagine, uh, for yourself there, Nita. Um Thank you very much uh, for joining, to this into, uh, joining us for this interview. But before you go, um, I just want a few quick thoughts on Ruddy going into the second round, Robin. How are you feeling? Uh, feeling way better than first round, Robin, for sure. But there's still a lot of stuff we have to work on. But I think we'll be, we'll be really good for playoffs. So that's all I care about. Excellent. I am excited to see that. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Naita. Congrats on the win today, and we will see you later, mate. Thanks a lot. Take care. And we will be seeing you all later as well, as we are popping to a short break. But don't go anywhere. Nord versus Natives coming right up.